Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Light has sprung up for the righteous, and joyful gladness for those who are true-hearted. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to God's holy name. Gracious, ever-generous God, we stand in awe of your outpouring of love for us and the incarnation of your Son. You seek us, you find us, you embrace us, and you bring us home. Help us accept this gift. Help us hear your searching call for us and give ourselves over to the life you would have us live. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. In those days, a decree went out from Mayor Kenny that everyone should be locked down. This was the second lockdown, and it was done when Tom Wolfe was governor of Pennsylvania. All people committed to love of neighbor, all who saw human life as sacred, and all who affirmed sacrifice for the common good, worshipped God at home that Christmas. While choirs were sadly silent, the angels did sing. The angels did sing over the quiet city because the lives of the most vulnerable were being protected. Christ is born. His salvation is displayed this Christmas in this way. And there was a census that year, and an election, and mass protests, riots, a pandemic, and massive unemployment, upset, turmoil, anger, fear. And yet, and yet, we believe that Christ was born a million times in our midst, giving hope in the whirlwind of it all. God's gift of God's Son to restore us to godly humanity came at such a time as this and has been proclaimed in every subsequent low point of human history. God's high point with humanity, the incarnation of God in Jesus, comes to us in our lowest points embracing and restoring us and giving hope beyond all evidence to the contrary that life is intended for human flourishing. Last night, we celebrated Christmas and Lessons and Carols here in the church, and I hope you tuned in to the live broadcast from King's College yesterday morning at 10 a.m., a family tradition in our house. The form we know Lessons and Carols in today was first offered at King's College, Cambridge, a month and a half after the armistice ending the First World War in 1918. Reverend Eric Milne, the dean of the chapel and a former chaplain in the front lines of that war, adapted the service to minister to a nation reeling from the horrors of mechanized warfare and human slaughter on a mass scale. The dean's prescription for a Europe that had lost faith in progress, lost faith in humanity, and lost faith in God was a healthy dose of beauty in song and scripture, the good news proclaimed as light and hope at another low point of human depravity, desperation, and division. A shattering moment, an apocalyptic moment where we surrendered 
a moment where surrendering to our worst impulses, we turn our best innovations and highest energies to slaughtering our neighbors. When I hear the lovely words of the lessons and carols bidding prayer, I always focus in on one phrase in particular. It goes like this. It says, all those who rejoice with us upon another shore and in a greater light. All those who, would, who rejoice with us upon another shore and in a greater light. And I see the multitude of the casualties, soldiers and civilians, on that farther shore and in that greater light, gathered into God, people from every corner of the globe, Africa, South Asia, Europe, the Middle East, Ireland, England, the United States, of all backgrounds, gathered around God. And my heart fills with grief, gratitude, and awe. Grief for lost humanity in every sense of the world, word. Grateful that in Christ the laws are found, embraced, and given a loving, safe home that we seem unable to provide for each other. Finally, my heart fills with awe because God succeeds where we routinely fail. God does what we cannot do for ourselves. God moves toward hostile. God moves towards hostile humanity. In defenseless vulnerability, naked and without shame, risking all for love without manipulation or domination, God does exactly what we avoid. God inhabits the space we vacate in our fear of ourselves and our fear of each other. God reclaims that space called humanity and invites us back in to live without shame or fear. Be not afraid. Be not afraid, says the angel to the shepherds. I will show you that humanity is still possible. Humanity is possible when joined to God. Our world is aching for disciples who hear God's call to move toward the redeemed gift of humanity and human community, who embrace the way of Christ in defenseless, naked, shameless vulnerability, who put away all domination and all manipulation, and to quote Dietrich Bonhoeffer, the great martyr who resisted the Nazi regime, at the manger, we pray for the grace to put down all arrogance, all vanity, all reputation, all individualism, insincere, worship of the child Jesus. We started in Pennsylvania today. Then we went to Cambridge and the trenches of the Great War, and indeed the whole globe that was affected. Let me finish in ancient Greece with the goddess Athena domesticating the Furies to put the democracy of Athens on a stable foundation, at least as this is told by Aeschylus in the Eumenides. As Martha Nussbaum writes in her wonderful book, The Monarchy of Fear, and we say that again because I want you to buy it and read it, The Monarchy of Fear by Martha Nussbaum, the Furies represent the danger lurking in all human anger. That danger is the thirst for revenge and retribution 
those impulses that keep the cycle of violence spinning out of control and that undermine all justice and all human flourishing. According to Aeschylus, Athena says to the Furies, and I can hear a lovely, reasonable voice here, Love to repose the bitter force of your vicious resentment. Love to repose the bitter force of your vicious resentment. Adopt a new range of sentiments instead. Where there is a spirit of envy and revenge, so future-directed benevolence. A spirit that listens to persuasion. A gentle-tempered intention and a generous generosity of giving in a mindset of common love. A generosity of giving in a mindset of common love. I hear our Lord in those words. I hear the movement of our God in Jesus Christ moving towards us in a generosity of giving, in a mindset of common love, intervening with world-changing gentleness, a whisper that changes our history forever, a gentleness that revives our hearts to God, a word we desperately need to hear because we are not so good at lulling our bitter forces. And we know that we cannot tame our furies on our own, but must be rescued by our dependence on God. And we need to hear this word because the Furies are at large in our nation. The Furies are at large in our nation and they are in us. We frighten ourselves, we frighten each other, and thanks be to God, we do not frighten God. God stays faithful. God does not forsake us. God moves towards us in gentle exposure and holds open the door and invites us back into our humanity no matter how hard we try to slam that door shut. God has reclaimed the human project for us. Inhabiting humanity and making it safe for us, even in our defenseless, naked, vulnerable, loving, heartfelt souls, to move across hostility in Christ's name. When we accept that invitation, the invitation of the manger, we join the restored humanity God gives us and hope and healing are in its wings. Amen. Amen.